Notice what sense you have the body right now. There may be some parts that are perfectly still, others are moving. And there's a sense of where you're sitting, your contact with the floor. You can focus on any of these things. It turns out they're all aspects of the breath. The movement, of course, is the obvious breath. And the simple fact that you're aware that you have arms and legs, even when you're not touching anything, that's an aspect of what's called breath energy. And it's through the breath energy that you notice that you're touching things. Without the breath, you'd be dead. There'd be no sense of awareness at all. So wherever there's a sense of the body that you're clear about, focus there. If you have trouble gaining a sense of the breath, just hold your breath for a while until you feel you can't hold it anymore. And then you'll notice when you breathe in where you feel the breathing. Focus on that sensation. All of this is to help ground you in the present moment, give you a place where you can look at your thoughts and not get carried away by them. But the time being, you don't look much at your thoughts. Just let them go, let them go, let them go. Aside from the thoughts that help you stay here, sometimes the mind needs a little bit of reasoning as to why to stay here and why not to be spending the whole hour obsessing about something. This is why we have that series of chants before the, before the meditation. The obvious one, of course, is the one we do every night, the one in the Brahma Viharas. I sit here for a little while, thinking thoughts of goodwill. May I be happy, may all beings be happy. And then ask yourself, do you really believe that? Do you really want all beings to be happy? Remember what it means for beings to be happy. It's not simply that you're going to touch them with a magic wand and make them happy with your thoughts. For them to be happy, they have to do the causes or create the causes for happiness, which means that they have to act skillfully. And if you think about people you resent or people you've had really bad relationships with, the idea that if they could become skillful in their actions, that's not such a bad idea. Now part of your mind may say, well, I'd like to see them suffer a little bit first. But then you ask yourself, is that a part of the mind that you really want to encourage? Then you start thinking about if they're going to be happy through doing skillful things, that that's where my happiness is going to come from. Where does that come from? It comes from the mind. The mind needs to be trained. Partly because it's so fickle, it can change so easily. You've got to get it to settle down for a while. Teach it some patience, some endurance. When the Buddha gave one of his very first sermons, not the first sermon, but an early sermon in his career, he had over a thousand Arahant disciples, and many of them had gained awakening simply by listening to one Dharma talk. And I was going to send them out to teach to spread the word. And so we reviewed some of the basic principles. Then he started with patient endurance. This, of course, is a skill that we've lost in our modern culture. I was reading the other day that a lot of people, if a video doesn't download within two seconds, they move on. They're not interested in waiting. And if that's your approach to meditation, You're not going to see any results, and you're going to get frustrated. You have to be willing to sit with it for a while, and not just sit with it. The skill of patience requires that you learn how to encourage yourself. Talk to yourself in a way that gives you some, some sense that you can do this. And if you stick with the breath for two or three breaths and then lose it, and don't say, okay, next time let's do it for five. Set goals for yourself that are not going to be setting yourself up for failure, things that you can do, and then try to stretch and stretch and stretch a little bit. 
and keep that positive attitude that, yes, we can do this. And the key to patient endurance is to realize that not everything is hard in the meditation. Simply breathing easily gives a sense of ease to the body. Learn how to appreciate that. Learn how to make the most of that. Don't drop the breath for the sake of the ease, but let the ease do its work. It feels good to be here. There's something that's called the pleasure and rapture of seclusion, which means that you're just simply dropping the thoughts that used to obsess you, and you're allowing this awareness in your body, the awareness that tells you this is where the legs are, this is where the hands are, etc. You allow this to have some space so you can sense it more, more clearly, more blatantly. We tend to block out our sensation of the body when we're thinking about things. This is one of the reasons why people who think a lot tend to be dissociated from their bodies. Because they're using the sensation of the body and translating it into thoughts. Now you've got to learn how to translate it back the other way. It's just body, and you don't have to translate in any kind of thinking at all. And the simple fact that you're not using these sensations and squeezing little thoughts out of them gives a sense of relief. Learn to appreciate that relief. It may not seem like much to begin with, but a lot of the things in the meditation start out as just very gentle, very gentle sensations, very gentle thoughts. In this case, it's just gentle sensations, it's like a little seed. You've got the seed for a redwood, which doesn't look like a redwood at all. In fact, it's very, very small. But if it has the right conditions, it'll grow and it'll become a huge tree. The same with concentration, the same with the well-being that comes from concentration. You have to learn how to protect the little things in the beginning. A little sense of ease, a little sense of respite. Learn how to appreciate that. Once you appreciate it, then you can let it spread and have more of the body be soothed by it. And this way you've got the energy you need in order to maintain your endurance and develop more patience. All too often I think of patience as just simply gritting your teeth and bearing with things until you break. But the real trick to patience is learning that there are positive things even in the midst of difficulties. And you know you may read about getting into jhana and having the whole body bathed in the ease. And you say, when is that going to happen? I don't see a whole body bathed in the ease. Well, there are little bits and pieces of ease scattered around the body. If there weren't some pleasant sensations in the body, you'd die. So they're there. Just learn how to give them some space. Take some nourishment from them. And then it'll be easier to stay with the breath, easier to stay here, grounded in the body. The more you can bring this sense of the awareness of the body up to the forefront, the easier it will be to withstand floods of thoughts that may come over the mind. You're here, they can just wash past. Wash past. You don't have to get involved. Some of the thinking comes from past karma, and it's going to happen. Other thinking comes from the fact that you're getting involved with your past karma thinking. You want to add a few more, a few more thoughts, a few more details. Twist the strands of thought into large ropes to tie yourself up with. That's what happens. But now you can say, no, just let the strands be loose ends, frayed ends. I don't have to make them into anything that makes any sense at all. There's just random chatter in the background of the mind. Keep it in the background. Because with, with some thinking you can say no, and it goes away. And other thinking, the more you say no to it, the more it flares up. The part of the mind that doesn't like being said no to. 
In this case, you say, okay, go ahead and chant over it, I'm not going to pay any attention. And it'll say some outrageous things for a while to get your attention. And then if you're really persistent, if you have some patience, it'll start to wear down. A lot of the results in the meditation come slowly. Well, they come after a long time. Sometimes they come quickly in a moment, but you have to get the conditions together for quite a while before the, the quick insights or the quick sort of quantum leaps in your concentration will happen. An image that's used in the canon is of the continental shelf off of India. There's a gradual slope out, and then there's a sudden drop. So if nothing seems to be happening for a while, just say to remind yourself you're on the gentle slope. As long as you keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath, and learn how to relate to the sense of the body in the present moment, however you interpret it as breath or just simply the presence of the body. Relate to it in a way that's not putting too much pressure on it, not putting too much of a squeeze on any part of the body, and at the same time not being too light and too disconnected from the body. Just be right there with the sensation and let the sensations have some space. And the gradual slope will finally reach that point where there are some sudden, sudden changes. So patient endurance. This is why the Buddha put this at the very beginning of his explanation of the basic principles of the teachings. It's what allows things to grow. Back in the old days, people were used to this kind of issue. You, you plant a, a grain of rice and it's going to take a while. You have to be patient. You have to have the confidence that, yes, if you look after the grain of rice, it'll grow. Nowadays, we want everything yesterday. Nowadays, we want it to be already there. More like the cartoon, the last Sunday paper, these guys order pizza. It takes 10 seconds to get there, and they complain about how slow instant gratification is nowadays. We're working on delayed gratification, but that doesn't mean there's no gratification at all. The way to be patient is to keep reminding yourself of the good things that are happening right now. Survey the body, survey your mind. See where things are quiet, where things have a sense of ease. may not be much, but remember, these are little seeds. Seeds take a while to grow. So learn the patience of a farmer, learn the patience of someone who's planning a, doing a reforestation project. You plant the seeds and you know if you look after things, the results will come. If you don't look after things, then those seeds will just die. And for a lot of us, that's been our experience with seeds. We plant them and then they die and they don't seem to offer much, which is why we tend to dismiss them. But I get a sense of appreciation. Seeds can grow. They can t contain huge trees inside them. They've got that potential. Your duty is simply to provide the water, provide the ground. In other words, be interested and keep coming back, coming back. Have the intention to keep coming back. And it's through your patient application of effort that the results will come.